Welcome to the Living Unconventionally podcast. I'm Brittany Felix, and every Monday I'll be speaking with someone that realized a traditional life with a soul-sucking 9-to-5 job just wasn't for them. They had the courage to go against what society told them they should want, and now they chase their passions all over the world. We'll discuss their unconventional journey and their exciting and sometimes terrifying travels. Every Wednesday we'll continue that conversation by talking about just how they can afford to travel so often and live a life of freedom most people only ever dream of. Every Friday, I'll answer your questions and offer advice and encouragement to help you start living unconventionally. If you allow yourself to be inspired by my amazing guest, one day I may just be featuring you in your world travels. Welcome to episode 52 of the Living Unconventionally podcast. This week's guest is Tom Hunt from TomHunt.io and VirtualValley.io, and he's going to provide a little bit of a different perspective from the rest of my guests so far. Tom has traveled extensively, but not necessarily for pleasure. Tom is, what he would say, excessively focused on his business right now. After spending three years in the corporate world, he realized that the pain of doing things he didn't care about was just too great and he had to do something about it. He needed to work for himself. So he started doing contract work and realized that he was still working for someone else's dream. So then he started a company of his own, Virtual Valley, where he connects people and companies with virtual assistants in the Philippines. Now, the great thing about this business is that he doesn't have to be where his clients are or, or where his virtual assistants are. He can work from anywhere in the world, and he chooses to do so, and he chooses to change that location fairly often. So while Tom is still working super hard on his business and really focused mainly on that, and by his own admittance, maybe not enjoying these locations as much as he probably should, he is still working in places like Budapest and Venezuela and Prague and Poland and Croatia. So I was really glad to have him on the show to let you know that just because you're going to have to Bust your ass building an online business doesn't mean you can't do it from an incredibly awesome location. And if you find a better work-life balance than Tom has, again, by his own admittance, it's sure to be better than being stuck in a cubicle. So let's go ahead and jump right in with Tom to see how he handles mixing business with travel. Well, Tom, why don't you tell me a little bit about your journey from leading a more traditional lifestyle to the unconventional way that you live now? Okay, so I think for the first 23 years of my life, I lived a very traditional lifestyle uh, for someone who was born in the area that I was, which is uh, around Bath and Bristol at that time in history. So I studied at school, got A-levels, went to university straight from university, got a job in the city of London, and then did that for three years. And I wasn't unhappy with that, I don't think. Like, I wasn't, I didn't think my life was rubbish. But towards the end of those, or even from the start of those three years that I was in, like, the corporate world, it never really resonated with me. I didn't wake up being like, yes, I get to cycle on my Barclays bike to the office and talk to people that that are awesome, amazing people, but talk about things that I didn't really care about right so in every meeting when anyone would be like Tom can you do this I'd be like yeah like I'd be really good and say yeah I'd do it but then in my head I'm like I really don't care Mm -hmm. so I guess for the first two years in the corporate world I just ignored it like I was like is this what you do right because I can tell nobody really cares about it (laughs) some people I think are really good at kidding themselves right to sort of fake that they do actually care when you don't and that's what I did really well for three years but in like the final year I was like okay I'm not doing this anymore if I had to thank one thing, one resource, it would be Tim Berners-Lee for inventing the internet, right? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. there's no way that I would have been able to sort of achieve what I've, I haven't achieved much, but there's no way I would have been able to leave the corporate world without having access to the knowledge and inspiration that is on the internet. Mm-hmm. So I discovered a few people online that had like started businesses on the internet. I remember waking up in January of this one year. I think it was 2013 or 2014. Yeah, 2014, okay? So two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I set myself a goal of leaving the corporate world by the end of that year. So pretty much every day for that year, I spent time either learning or implementing things that I'd learned to build an income 
through businesses on the internet. And then on the final day of work, I think the 22nd of December 2014, I handed in my notice and left. Wow. So I think that like the pain of doing things that I didn't care about, mm-hmm. that got too great that I just had to do something about it, right? Absolutely. So that's a story. Sorry, I went on a bit there. No, no, that's perfect. And a story that I would have to think so many people are going to be able to relate to. I know I can. Okay. I mean, a hundred percent. I'm one of those people where when I'm at work, I am fantastic at faking it. <laughs> you know, so much so that I I generally am very well liked by my superiors okay. and I am constantly asked to head up different projects and all of these things because I'm very, very good at faking it. And the whole time I just am screaming in my head, who cares about this? Yeah. Like, so no, I, I completely get it. So when you made that shift and you, you handed in your notice and, and you were there on your last day, what was the next step? I think I was actually quite lucky. The business that I started building halfway through that year that allowed me to leave was like a small outsourcing business where I would match up startups in London that couldn't afford to employ people in London with people I knew in the Philippines. And then the startups would pay me and then I'd pay the people in the Philippines and I'd be like the middleman, like advising mm-hmm. them on outsourcing because that's what I've been doing in the corporate world. Actually, the first client of that business, I built an awesome relationship with and he had a startup studio. They built startups in London and he, to help me leave the corporate world, he said, you can come and contract with his startup studio for four days a week. Um, we'll pay you as a contractor. And so that's what I did when I left the corporate world. So I was like four days a week contracting and then one day a week on the business. And then I did that for three months. And then it was better than the corporate world. And I, and I cared more about the work. We were still building someone else's dream. Right. And I wanted to build my own one. So I left that in May of last year, 2015. And then since May, I traveled like I say travel, but it was like working and, and being in mm-hmm. a different place, basically. So from the, the north, like Norway, all the way down through Europe to Montenegro in Croatia. And then spent two months in Venezuela. And now I'm back in England and plan to go to somewhere in Europe to live for an extended period of time. That's fantastic. And so when you were moving to these different places, how long would you typically spend in one location? So the Norway thing was to see friends, then went to Poland to see more friends. So that wasn't really working. That was like holidays with friends. And then we went from Poland to Prague, spent three weeks in Prague, and then that was like working all day, every day. And then six weeks in Budapest, again, like working all day, every day. Croatia, that was a bit more like socializing because like we had loads of friends there, but still working a bit. And then sort of Montenegro and Croatia. Yeah, so it varied for every place. But my most enjoyable period of time, I think, was in Budapest, just working. Like, there was some socializing. I had some friends there, but, like, just working every day and Mm -hmm. experiencing the city a little bit. I think the point I I would make here is that when you see people, like, running businesses on the Internet and, like, traveling around the world and you see their, like, Instagram profile, uh, it looks amazing. Like, if you go on my Instagram profile for the last, for, like, two months, it looks amazing. It looks like like I do no work, right? Like, I'm on, like, waterfalls. (laughs) I'm, like... yeah on the beach but then what like to get those pictures like that's like you go out for six hours at the weekend take like 10 pictures and then post them for the rest of the week because you just sat on your computer right since i've been back in england so i've like, been back in england for a month like at my parents house just like working on this business i've been posting like old pictures from the summer because i'm not going to post pictures <laughs> on my instagram like sat in my leggings like on the computer so the point is i still haven't made the point the point is that it's actually quite a lot of work, like to start any business up. Yeah, absolutely. And I talk about that on, uh, well, I mentioned it a little bit on my website and, and just in general, I understand that what we see on the internet and what people project on social media is not yes a hundred percent accurate. I would, I would venture to say it's more inaccurate than it is accurate. Exactly. And, and they're great for inspiration. I mean, it's, you know, sure. Everybody follow me on Instagram, follow you on Instagram. Fantastic. Be inspired. Mm-hmm. You know, let these pictures motivate you to go out and, and you know, take some of your own and, and explore the world, but still realize that no one's ever just going to hand you, here's a, a free around the world trip. You know, why don't you just take a year and just travel on us? Like, yeah. I mean, you have to work for it. Exactly. What I've realized over the past six months is that maybe the joy is not actually in like sitting on the beach and having a margarita. Maybe mm-hmm. the joy is in actually helping other people. 
and you can do Absolutely. that for a charity you can do that for a business and get paid the money so you can still go and have the margarita right mm -hmm. i think or i'm i'm coming to believe i didn't believe this before but yeah helping people actually gives you like a deeper more genuine sense of satisfaction absolutely yeah i completely agree with that and just being able to have the freedom to choose how you want to spend your time mm -hmm. and where you want to spend it you may be working all day every day but it's working for yourself to help you build a life that you want exactly that's incredible you don't work because you feel like you're a slave to this particular building you have to go into every day mm -hmm. and this particular boss who may or may not actually really even care about you mm -hmm. you know you're working for you and it's your choice to do so and to me that's what that transition into living an unconventional life is and especially you know working online and having a location independent lifestyle it's having the freedom to go where you want and when you want to do what you want mm -hmm. now again you have to have responsibilities and and ways to keep that going which includes working mm -hmm. but you choose how and where and when I agree. The, the, like the key difference I see between being an entrepreneur and being an employee, and that is that as an entrepreneur, if you don't create the value, you don't get paid, and mm -hmm. so you can't go and take value from the world because you're just going to go into debt, right? Whereas when you're an employee, this relationship between the value that you create and the value you receive is not necessarily direct. As in, for me, definitely, when I was in the corporate world, some days I, w I wouldn't create any value. But I'm still getting that paycheck at the end of the month, right? So I can still go and sort of take value from the world. And that, I think, will like blacken your soul when you're like not providing, but you're taking. But when you're an entrepreneur, that the relationship is, is very direct and it's very clear. If you're not mm -hmm. creating value for your clients or customers, you don't get paid. You can't go to like the, you can't go to Starbucks to have a coffee. Right. If so, it's harder, basically, <laughs> is the right. summary. <laughs> you can't just like wake up go on your computer and like go on Facebook. Like you can't right. because you, you, you're not going to get paid. You can't pay rent. Right. Yeah. I, you do have to be very disciplined and you have to be able to self-motivate yourself. There's nobody there that's going to lead a team meeting in the morning to give everyone a pep talk and tell you exactly what to do that day. I mean, you, you have to do it all for yourself. And I think at least for me personally, and I would, I mean, it, this is typically the case for other entrepreneurs that actually excites people. I mean, that's what gets them waking up every day is that they know that they are in charge. Yeah, there are things out of our control, but nothing's going to happen unless we make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think conventional wisdom would tell you that if you get something for nothing, it's a good thing. And I think that's what we've been, or well, definitely what I was brought up to believe, is mm -hmm. that if you can get paid for doing not much work, it's a good thing. So if I went to the pub with like some of my friends and I'd be like, yeah, I just got paid a thousand dollars for doing like nothing. They'd be like, oh, that's awesome. Right. It's not really a good thing because as we said before, the real joy is in creating the value for other people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, where would be the sense of pride if you got paid for not doing anything? You know, where's the sense of accomplishment and fulfillment and achievement? You know, and all of those things to me are are much more sustaining, you know, emotionally. So when you travel in these different areas and you say that you're, you know, you're working constantly in them, are you choosing these locations for a reason for the business or do they not really coincide with each other? Do you just go to the next location based on where you personally want to go? How does that work? Yeah, I think we'll get on to this in more detail in the second part of the interview where we talk about like where I make, make my money. But the outsourcing business I described before, in order to get clients for that, I had to be in London. We've since transitioned to a, like a marketplace where I don't have to be in the same places where the clients are. So in answer to your question, I don't select any of the places on where I can find customers or clients. The factors are different. And we can, we can run through them quickly. Cost of living, temperature, network. I think they're the three. So if it's cheap, is it hot? And mm -hmm. are there people there that I want to know? Okay. So Budapest like hit each of these like really low cost of living, really warm. I really like Budapest. There's quite a big community of people doing this sort of thing, like working or making an income like online and mm -hmm. like really pushing themselves in business and other areas. So that was why I enjoyed it so much there. So when you go to these places, do you try to network in person? Is that a key part of being in these different locations? To be brutally honest, I didn't do any of that in Budapest. There were people there that I knew. 
And so, mm-hmm. like, the one or two nights where I would go out in the week, I would go out with them, and then they would have their friends, and we'd, like, all become friends. Did you get to explore any of these places and, and, and really take time for yourself to enjoy them, or do you feel like, you know, maybe there were some missed opportunities and you wish you, you would have had a little bit more free time? Or... Here's a really interesting question. I think later in my life, I'm going to go to these places and I'm going to be like more present and I'm really going to enjoy them. But for the last mm-hmm. six months, when like my income hasn't, like it's been a stable, but it's not in the place where I want it to be. Whenever I would be out exploring the national parks in Venezuela, I never really truly enjoyed it, even though it was like an amazing thing to do because there's this stuff that I need to do like back on my laptop. Now, I think it might be because I'm, I can be quite excessive and compulsive with things. Like, I, I really want to, like, smash it with this business, right? It seems like any moment when I'm not working on it is wasted. But I don't think that's a healthy way to live. And I'm working on being more present away from work mm-hmm. because I think I've probably missed out on a lot of stuff. And I think that's a constant struggle for a lot of entrepreneurs, especially the ones that travel. Yeah. You know, and even the ones that don't, even the ones that stay in one location, when they're not working on their business or their next goal or project or dream they do constantly feel like they're just losing out on on so much time when they can be you know making things happen and it is a constant struggle to find that balance where you do take the time for yourself to kind of mentally recharge and and really be present Mm -hmm. in the moment you have to think about like why you're even doing the business thing in the first place Mm -hmm. i mean you're probably doing it to build a lifestyle where you can go and enjoy the national parks of venezuela right right so i haven't been very good at that but that's i'm working on it so in the times that you did get to go out and you did explore the areas, is there a particular moment or place or experience that stands out in your mind as being a favorite moment? Yeah, I think, I don't know if you've ever been to Venezuela, but the, the capital city, Caracas, is awesome. I didn't realize the landscape around the city until one night we were in, I'm on top of this hotel, like drinking cocktails, and I sort of turned around and this massive mountain to the north. So it's like the sea, the, the Gulf of Mexico, and then you have Venezuela, and then you have these massive mountains, and then Caracas is on the other side. So, like, at the weekends in Caracas, is awesome because loads of people will go, even though it's, like, really dangerous, it's, like, the only place where you, you, it's unlikely that you're going to get mugged, is this sort of mountain, it's called the Avila, it's like a national park, and everybody goes there, like, really early in the mornings on Saturdays and Sundays to, like, run up and down. And we decided to try and run like most people will only run up like half an hour to like some Mm -hmm. little park area and then come down me and my friend decided to try and run all the way to the top so you could look over the other side at the sea Mm -hmm. in one morning and it took us like four and a half hours but that was definitely the highlight it was like so awesome i don't think i'd ever enjoyed hiking well it's like hiking slash running so much in my life and so you guys did make it to the to the summit so my friend was with a girl who was like his girlfriend at the time she was really slow so i had to go ahead um (laughs) But yeah, yeah, we, we all made it. It was amazing. How long did you guys spend up at the top? I waited for like two hours for them, I think. Oh, wow. Wow, so she was really slow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> but the pro, okay, they have the, a wider problem in Venezuela. So I didn't have a phone and it's pretty dangerous there. And like the money situation is quite hard. Like if, if you don't have cash, then you can't use your debit or credit card. We won't go into why, but you can't. So I was stuck at the top with no phone, no money. And the, they were like really, really late so i was just really worried that i was gonna have to stay there and like stay on the mountain on my own mm-hmm. but it was fine they turned up and then we sort of just relaxed for like an hour and then went down did you ever have any kind of uh scary experiences with it being unsafe there or did you not have really have problems i didn't see any crime i was there for like two months there were stories like this girl came to meet us after work we were working in a co-working space in the middle and she's never turned up and we were like okay we thought because she was co- coming on a date with my friend uh, she didn't turn up. I, I was just like rinsing him like your girl didn't want to. She stood you up. But it turned out that she got mugged and had all her stuff taken away from her. So like, yeah, it's definitely it's dangerous, but we didn't. I think we were quite lucky. Now, did you guys take any steps to maybe prevent anything from that happening? What I guess what would you recommend to somebody going to Venezuela to maybe help prevent that from happening to them? Don't go out after 8 p.m. on your own. The, the whole capital city, Krakow, is like dead after 8 p.m. So don't go out on really? your own. Like, if, like, if you're a girl, you wouldn't go out on your own at all. So we just got taxis everywhere. Uh, we didn't really, I didn't really walk anywhere. Hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe I wouldn't recommend going there because if you went there and something bad happened, then I would feel really bad. But it was so much fun. An amazing place, amazing people, but just a bit dangerous at the moment. I'm sure it'll get better. Now that you're back in London, I'm sorry, where did you say you were going to in February? 
if not confirmed yet, but I think it's going to be Poland. Oh, awesome. So how do you prepare for these trips when you go to these new locations that I'm assuming you've, most of them you've never been to before? Yeah. Yeah. How do you, whenever you find out about the new location, what's your process for getting ready to yeah. make the trip? I think going back to like the business thing, all these other, like I hate admin stuff. So all this admin stuff, I leave it to the last minute and either someone else will book the accommodation or I'll just go on Airbnb. Or like I have, as I'm in like the outsourcing business, I have like people in the Philippines that I give a lot of work to. So I'd be like, okay, can you go on Airbnb and find me a place? In terms of preparation, very, very little preparation. And I'll just sort of go there and I'll try and figure it out. I don't know why it's never really occurred to me until just now. For people who do travel constantly, it might make sense to outsource some of that <laughs> prep work, even if it's not for a business. Yeah. yeah. I guess we'll get on to this in the next part, but I have a belief that like there's an opportunity cost associated with your time. So if you spend two hours looking on Airbnb, but the value of your time in your business is actually like $10 an hour, you can outsource that work mm -hmm. for $3 an hour. And you're actually, right. if you do the math, you're getting paid $7 an hour to not do the work. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that's true. They could research all of the accommodations and they could even, you know, put together a packet of all the places that you want to go see or information on the country. I mean, it's kind of endless what they could do. I will have to keep that in mind uh, whenever we do start traveling more often. So the trips that have been a little bit more for pleasure where you've said you, you've had friends and you visited there. Yeah. Do you find that when you take a specific trip to visit friends, you know, you're there for a particular period of time. Is it hard even then to disconnect from, from the business side? I think, yeah still yes still like the majority yeah. of my time is spent on this because at this stage in these like three years of my life i really want to try and get the business thing handled so almost everything i do is like to try and handle that and then i can move on to like the next thing maybe being more cultural or learning a language so yeah even when so we spent 10 days in croatia with like there was six of us in this awesome house in this mm -hmm. cute little town actually still worked every day but spent a lot of time socializing but still a lot of time like thinking about what book I could read that night because I needed to learn about selling or whatever but I think don't uh, for people listening like don't get the impression that if you start a business it's gonna like consume you like it sort of has for me maybe that's just me like being so excessive I mean it's different personality yeah. types there are you know there are people who are going to require the time away from the business to you know recharge and and just kind of regroup. So yeah, it's, I think it's just different personality types, definitely. Yeah. So now, as far as future travel plans, do you foresee trying to incorporate in the future more travel not related to your business, or do you think it's probably going to stay pretty steadily connected with it for a while? Yeah, so I envision a life, this is maybe quite a complex idea, but a life where there is no real division between work and play I mean, it's just a life right okay. so i could fly to california to have some meetings but i'm also doing that because i want to go to california does that make sense yeah everything in your life you, you're doing it because you want to but you're doing it also because you can sort of monetize that somehow through these systems that you build up behind you mm -hmm. if you go out and take loads of awesome photos on instagram right and then they show your like awesome traveling lifestyle Someone will see that, they'll click on the link and they'll look at your, say, outsourcing company that will allow you to hire a virtual assistant to do your travel plans. And then they sort of give you money for that business and you use that money to like invest back into your life so you can take more Instagram photos. So that everything around your life is like a one massive sales funnel, but it's not like sleazy and like, you know, you're trying to like take people's money, but it's just your life and you can add value to other people because you're so good at this stuff and then you invest that money back into yourself. Like I don't know if I explained that very well. It made perfect sense to me. Okay, good. Yeah. Back to your question about like traveling business. I, I want it to be integrated, but I think I do need to work on in the future when I have this business thing sorted, doing more stuff that's not directly related to business. So actually taking like two weeks off to read books and relax. What advice would you give to somebody who is in the situation that you were two years ago and the one that I'm working out of now where we're just not fulfilled, just the traditional lifestyle that, you know, we were always told we were supposed to do, just isn't quite a good match for us but they don't know where to start mm -hmm. what piece of advice would you give them okay i think i'll give a couple thing number one like stop giving a shit what people think about you 
it's especially when you're in the whole corporate world or in like any job your whole like social circle and your identity is like defined with that job and if you start doing things differently people are going to react they don't want you to sort of break out so the first thing is like stop giving a shit what people think about you but it's easy for me to say that you have to continuously desensitize you yourself to other people's opinions and that is it's a hard process and it's a long process i've only sort of managed mm-hmm. to do that over the past three years and how you do that is by actually doing different things and being subjected to people's opinions becoming aware of it and then feeling that it doesn't really matter so if you are going to change your life uh, to like break out of a job you're going to have to stop caring about what people think about you so that's number one the second one is about regaining control of your time the only way that you're going to be able to leave your job by creating an income that will replace that salary is by being able to provide value to other people now value is quite a strange word it's quite hard to understand but the only thing that you need to understand about it is that it is subjective and it only sort of exists in the mind of someone else so in order for you to deliver this strange thing called value that is someone else's opinion you have to develop skills okay you have to develop skills that will provide that value the only way you're going to develop those skills to provide that value is by investing time in developing yourself so you have to control your time to enable you to build the skills to enable you to provide the value to be repaid a fraction of that value in money so you can leave your job yeah absolutely and i think both of those are are solid pieces of advice and i i especially love the first one and i'm surprised at how little that actually comes up in my discussions Mm -hmm. i know i deal with that on my own side i have one parent that's that's very supportive of our goals to you know travel full-time in an rv and eventually internationally sweet and he he and he he loves you know it's my father and mm-hmm. he travels now i mean to certain few places and it's always to the beach and but he gets it he kind of gets that lifestyle of wanting to explore and be free and he's mm-hmm. he's actually an entrepreneur himself he started his own business when he was fresh out of high school oh awesome and then there's my mother who worked the same job okay right out of high school all the way through and just retired and she hasn't i don't think she's ever been out of the country and, you know, she she loves being in the city. She hates camping and, and she just does not get it. Yeah. So we've dealt with that from some of our family members and, and some of our friends. And you just have to basically get to a point where you're right. You just don't give a shit. Yeah. And like it's not being horrible to people. It's just trying not to listen to them. Yeah. It, you're not living your life for them. You're living it for you. So you need to do what's going to fulfill you. And that wraps up part one of my interview with Tom. We did talk a little bit more about business and being an entrepreneur in this section than I typically do. However, I do like the conversations to just flow organically, so I hope it wasn't too much of a distraction for you. And I hope you understand why I thought Tom's perspective would be nice to have on the show. If you would like to check out Tom's Instagram or his Twitter or either one of his websites, I will have links to all of those in the show notes for this episode on my website. And you can find those at livinguncommonally.com forward slash episode 052. Again, those are the numbers 052. And if you have enjoyed this episode or any of my previous ones, please hit the subscribe button on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere that you are listening to this. If none of those platforms really work for you and you're choosing to listen to this on my website instead, but you want to make sure that you don't miss out on future episodes, all you have to do is sign up for my email list, And you can do that by clicking the link in the show notes where you're currently listening to this or just simply texting the word freedom to 444-999. Friendly reminder to make sure that you join the Living Unconventionally Facebook group to connect with a community of like-minded people. Funny enough, I just had a former guest who is a member of that group and one of the other members discover that they actually had mutual friends in Panama. Neither one of them are from Panama. They've both lived there at different times, and they have mutual friends. So hop in that group and start building relationships with other people who are going to completely understand and relate to you. You can find the link to that group in the show notes as well, or just simply searching for Living Unconventionally on Facebook, and it should come right up. We would love to have you join our community. Thank you so much for listening into this episode today. And I hope that you come back on Wednesday where Tom is going to dive further into his business and give some real details on how it's been to get that up and going. 
And you also may or may not get to hear a story about the time he was on the Canadian version of Shark Tank, pitching an idea for male leggings. So you definitely don't want to miss it. So I will see you back on Wednesday.